of my Akazuki, a tier 6 Japanese destroyer. Overall though, I did pretty good in the battle. I got 147,000 damage, 14 torpedo hits, 3 destroyed ships. This was the only video I was able to get due to Ghosts in the Machine. Here is the leaderboard from the battle, 370,000 credits, 147,000 damage, 14 torpedo hits, 3 destroyed ships. Overall, a really good battle I thought. And here, sure enough, I finished first overall with 2830 for the final score. It was really a good score. How did I do it? What commander did I use? How was the ship set up? Let's go over all that. Afterwards, you will see a battle that I had the next day in the Akazuki where I was able to get an even greater score. All right, so here's my Japanese destroyer captain. It's Tanaka. You can see I have him ranked up to 15.2, and the point two is I have him at legendary two. So you can see his base trait is Hull Crusher. It increases the damage of your torpedoes. He's currently at four and a quarter percent. If I were to rank him up to rank 16, it would go to four and a half percent. Then when you add legendary two, three and legendary four, I believe that the maximum amount of torpedo damage here would be plus five percent to your torpedoes, but haven't done that yet. But that's the potential. As for my inspirations, the first one is Bay because I, I want to increase the concealment of the destroyer. You can see that he's up to rank 16 and he decreases the detectability of my destroyer by another 5.1%. The secondary inspiration is Reginald Tierwit. He's also at rank 16 and I mostly have him to decrease the torpedo launcher's reload time. I decided to go this route rather than pursue uh, Jerzy Swirsky, the Polish commander that can be bought at times. To buy him and his destroyer, which came bundled together, it would have been about $60. As I've been playing destroyers, I've noticed, for myself anyway, that the concealment was not really what was holding me back. It seemed like I wasn't getting the torpedoes reloaded and the ability to shoot them as quick as I would want. So that's why I pursued the Reginald Tierwit route and so far I'm pretty happy with that decision. As far as the skills, the first skill is Subsurface Venture and it reduces torpedo launcher reload time and increased torpedo travel speed and it increases the main battery reload time, which I don't really care about much. I, I'm mostly using the destroyers for uh, torpedo damage, not really main battery, you know, gunship usage. I, I'm mostly torpedo launching. So reducing the torpedo launcher's reload time is a main concern of mine as well as concealment. So that's why I've configured my commander to be able to do both of those skills. So down here, the second skill is either look at me now, which increases the ship concealment rating minus 6%, or you can go down here and, uh, you know, you can increase or decrease the ship detectability range by up to 10%, but it also lowers the maximum HP of the ship by 10%. And I've had some battles where if I selected this as my skill, I would not have had the HP in my destroyer that it would take to, to win the match. By doing the minus 10% here was definitely not the way I was gonna go. So I've picked look at me now. The third skill is back in stock. Again, it's reducing torpedo launcher reload time. The fourth skill is smoke on the water. And unstoppable is a legendary skill that you wanna select for any destroyer captain that you're configuring for any ship within the game. Okay, let's see how I have the ship configured. Let's look at the upgrades first. I've got Aiming Systems Mod 1, Propulsion Mod 2, Concealment Mod 1, 
And I've got all the rest of these other upgrades here. Better torpedoes. Targeting system mod 1. You can see it will increase the firing range of your main guns by 10%. And I, I got the hull upgrade to add 1,500 hull damage. I found that it has made the difference of being able to survive a battle or not. So here's the stats for the destroyer. And the important thing here is you see the reload time on the torpedo launchers is down to 60.4 seconds. I'll show you what that normally be by uh, setting up a commander that's not set up for destroyers. He's, uh, he's going to be a battleship commander that I'm going to apply here. So uh, the main thing to keep track of here is the reload time of the torpedoes is 60 seconds. The maximum damage is 17,600. And the concealment here is 5.1 kilometers. And uh, you can see the rating is 100%. That's pretty good. It turns out that if you did double concealment, and you were able to lower uh, that rating even even farther uh, as far as the range goes, it would still be considered concealment 100, but your detectability range would be down to like 4.8, 4.7, maybe even 4.6. So let's see what happens if I were to select a commander that is not a destroyer commander. I happen to know that this is a battleship commander, so let's see what happens when we configure Takagi. And here you can see that the torpedo reload time went from 60 seconds back up to 76 seconds. So by having Reginald Tierwit and Tanaka combined, you're dropping 16 seconds off of your torpedo reload time. And the concealment is 5.7 kilometers. So it was 5.1, so by adding uh, the wrong commander, essentially, you're increasing your concealment by 0.6 kilometers. So you might wonder, what difference does camouflage make? So I will go ahead and remove the camouflage And so now I have no camouflage. We'll go back and look at the stats and you can see the concealment has gone all the way up to six kilometers and it, it's now 95. So it, it doesn't add a lot, but it adds just a, a small little bit that really in battle does make a difference. So let's put the commander back and we'll add the permanent camouflage again. All right, so that's basically how I have the uh, ship set up. So let's go into that battle and see how the next day's result went. Battle starts. All right, so we're in Tears of the Desert. I'm going to head over to A and look for any targets of opportunity. I generally like to go into the open waters and I find it easier to maneuver there. Here, I'm looking at the other ships and the different users here. I'm um, just trying to get familiar with what the opposition is. But I'm really going to concentrate on going over to A and trying to capture that flag. My goal here is to get as much XP and global XP as I can for the Havoc. I'm going to check one more time. And I don't really see any targets opportunity at this point, but I am going to head over here. A lot of times I like to do the exact opposite of what has been talked about a lot, um, where the destroyers are wrecking the play of the game by abandoning their other ships. And, you know, I'm just going out here and hunting, and that's basically what I do. You don't really get any experience points for spotting the enemy for, for your teammates, so I, I generally really haven't done that. But here, 
I am uh, looking for targets of opportunity, and I've decided to take a shot on the Ganesh now there. And I'm going to take another shot at the uh, Buddy Noy. I think that's how you pronounce it. And since the Akazuki has three torpedo launchers, I'm keeping one in reserve for defensive purposes. And you can see here I'm starting to capture the base. I'm still looking to scope out the enemy ships. I'm, I'm looking for whatever ship has a favorable uh, torpedo angle. I don't really see one yet except for this Ganesh now here, but uh, you see this battleship over here closing in on the Ganesh now, and once they start getting in battle, uh, both ships tend to move around, so that's why I'm not really going to waste my time on the Ganesh now here, because he, he probably won't be in that position that you see where the torpedo intercept was. But here I've stopped I'm about 10 seconds away from capturing the area, then I could move on and try to um, take out some other targets of opportunity. And that uh, bat, the, my Ganesh now over here is getting ready to get destroyed. And you can see that the enemy Ganesh now that I didn't fire the torpedoes at, he's completely changed direction. He's going in the opposite direction. So I saved a uh, torpedo launch bay right there. I, I didn't waste uh, three torpedoes on that. Now I'm going to concentrate on the Arizona. And what I'm trying to do here is get the Arizona at a broadside angle. And I'm not going to fire all three torpedo banks at the same time. I'm going to wait a little bit and get a different angle for the uh, the ship that I'm firing at to try to deal with. So he's got to deal with the first torpedo bay that I launched. Now he's going to have to deal with the second one and then even a third one. So you can potentially get like three different angles of your torpedo shots going at uh, at your enemy here. And you can see I, I nick him with one. That kind of shows me that he's not really changing direction that much. So I'm going to go ahead and fire these other two banks over. And now you can see that I've closed in to my detectability range. I'm at 4.9 kilometers to this um, Arizona. And my detectability range is at 5.1. So I hit the smoke and I basically turn around. It's like my escape maneuver number one. You hit the smoke and do a 180. And now that I'm not in the smoke, the smoke is between me and the um, the Arizona over here you can see that he still can't really see me even though in a few few minutes you're gonna see that the Arizona is within 5.1 kilometers of my Akazuki here and he still can't see me because the smoke is in the way so I'm gonna fire another shot at him I'm closing in here, you can see the Arizona's at 4.7 kilometers, 4.6, 4.5, and he can't see me. The eyeball is not showing up. 4.3, now it does because I'm out of the smoke. And if I'm not mistaken here, this guy gets taken out right there, and my torpedoes don't even have a chance at him. But so far, I've gotten 52,000 damage, so I'm kind of well on my way to see if I could match my 147,000 damage the day before. And so now I'm kind of going between both the Ganesh nows over here to see which one sort of looks better. And this one over here, even though it has more health left, it is much closer. And I am going to take a couple shots on this guy. Now I'm spotted again, and it's by this destroyer. I've already shot my uh, my smoke, so it's going to take another two and a half minutes to reload the smoke charge. So I've just got to do the best I can to maneuver. You can see that the SEO pops his smoke canister, and I'm going to try to take some blind shots with my torpedoes here. I do a, a narrow 
a narrow spread and a wide spread. And I've noticed that a lot of times between the two different spreads, it does confuse uh, the enemy destroyers. And I do get quite a few kills. I'm not successful in this case, but that's generally what I found is pretty, uh, pretty reliable is the widespread and the narrow spread when, when you're going against the uh, enemy destroyer. So now I'm going back to concentrating on this Ganesh now over here. It looks like uh, this other destroyer isn't really doing anything. He's in the smoke. Turns out that when you're in the smoke, you uh, many times you can't see outside unless someone else is uh, on, on your team has spotted another ship. So he probably can't see me, obviously, because the eyeball isn't on my screen here. So I've got uh, two torpedo. I've got all three torpedo bays loaded. So I'm going to take some random shots here in the smoke, hoping to catch that destroyer. And I'm going back to the Ganesh now here. You know, what I'm looking for when I'm targeting is um, to see whether he's changing speed or not, or whether the, the targeting uh, targeting indicator here <coughs> is, um, is steady, and it kind of looks like it is. So I'm going to close in a little bit more, and now it's kind of looking like he's turning more um, bow on to me, and that's not really that favorable of an angle. This is becoming more of a favorable angle, but you can see he's six kilometers away, so he's getting within my detectability range, so I kind of have to be careful here. Okay, so my smoke is um, reloaded, and I take a shot at the Ganesh now, and as you can see, I don't really go uh, before I don't aim before or after the uh, computer indicator. I pretty much go right on the white line there. So I I'm generally go with whatever the computer suggests. And you can see I got three hits on a Ganesh now. So now I'm up to 91,000 damage and the, um, got two more hits. So I got five hits. I'm up to 114,000 damage. And I'm well on my way to uh, my 147 again. The difference between this match and the previous match is within the last day I upgraded, I, I ranked up um, the commander here to rank 15. So his base trait is a higher uh, amount of torpedo damage. So each torpedo hit is gaining several more percentage uh, damage points per torpedo hit and that could be why the output is a little bit higher here. You can see I have eight torpedo hits which is pretty good. I rarely get over 10 torpedo hits it seems like even though yesterday I did have 16. We'll see how it goes here. I've got this uh, Fuso up here that um, I decided to take a, a random shot at. You can see I'm within range, and for some reason, he's not really firing at me, and I'm out of smoke. So uh, there, he's starting to fire at me. And I, I took a third shot at him. You can see some of the torpedoes are, uh, are hitting him already. I'm, uh, I'm up to 137. And with my uh, torpedo reload time down to a minute, you can see that I'm almost ready to fire my torpedoes again. So the really quick reload time on the torpedoes, I think, is key here. I think um, had I have waited the 16 seconds more that I showed you previously earlier in, in this video, um, I would not have survived to be able to fire the last shots here that end up uh, killing this Fuso. And you can see it's kind of getting dicey here. I'm down to 2,100 health left. And he gets me right as I get him, or I get him a split second earlier. And the battle's ended just like that. And you can see that I reached my new milestone. So 
I was trying to go for Global XP and I got enough to uh, finish this Havoc milestone and I'm well on my way in the Havoc to uh, getting to Siegfried but here here's the um, the score page you can see 168,000 damage and I did really well I thought 12 torpedo hits two damage two destroyed ships um, I really accomplished a lot of goals here you can see the team result I was first again on my team but we lost so uh, if you look at the winning team I did have enough points to finish third place on the winning team which is kind of rare when, when you're on the losing team a lot of times you don't even make it on the leaderboard for the winning team so here you could look at the economy you can see I had the epic ship XP booster going and the epic global XP booster and you can see that the way that they increase the the totals there it really does maximize your XP for for your ship XP and the global XP. Well, there you see it. That's how to configure the Akazuki for maximum damage. This is the Jaguar, and I'll see you on the high seas. Thanks for watching, and hit subscribe if you like it.